Welcome back to our mini series on playing keys in a worship band. If you haven't checked out the other previous three videos, I'd love to encourage you to do that as we're building up from video to video. In this video, we're gonna look at different sounds available to you and how to use them. This is the bit of keys playing that I especially love. I love sound, I love production, and I love how a whole mix comes together. I love how you can use different sounds in different contexts, and I love using them to make a song come alive. Current worship music is basically a very produced pop type sound, and there's a few reasons why we aim for this sound. It's accessible to everyone, it's generally somewhat enjoyable by, to everyone, and it's easy to sing along to. To make up that sound, current worship music is roughly 50% what you play and 50% the sounds that you use. So mastering your sound can literally be half the battle towards creating a great worship music. And this applies for guitarists, bass players and drummers as well as keys players. The sound and textures that you use are so important. So let's get started. First, we have the obvious one, piano. That's probably the first sound that we've all played and in some way the reason that we're here. Well, there are a few different piano sounds that you can use to uh, utilize to adapt to each song. I think there are four main types of piano sound that you might often turn to. We have the traditional grand piano sound, something like this. We have a hard piano sound, something that's got a bit more attack. We have an upright piano sound, something that you'd, you'd find from an upright piano. And then lastly, we have an electric piano or often a Fender Rhodes type sound. Can you hear how they're all really different? They can be used in different songs to create different feels. I reckon probably 60% of the time I stick on a regular grand piano sound, but for a particular song, especially for example big songs with piano riffs and lots going on, I find that the grand piano sometimes doesn't cut through the mix. So for that I'd turn to a hard piano sound, something a bit like this. Sometimes I want something that's going to just really fade into the mix and for that I'd use an electric piano like this, like we talked about before. You see how it's much more mellow and chilled out. Lastly, you might want that really intimate feeling of an upright piano, especially in a very sparse or quiet song, something like this. You can pick and choose which one you want for which song. Have a listen to the original recording and, and see what they do, and then go from there. At our City Centre site keyboard rig, we use main stage um, for uh, our, our pad sounds and organ sounds that we're gonna come on to in a second, but for, for our key sounds, we're using this keyboard here with four different uh, buttons, which will switch between the different piano sounds. At our south site rig, we don't have so much flexibility, and so you might have to create different sets with different sounds. Reverb is a huge part of piano sounds too. Reverb is like being in a cave when the sound reverberates off different surfaces and sustains on. On a piano, you can use it uh, to create a really ethereal sound. Let's hear that. Let's hear the piano without any reverb and then let's hear it with the reverb. So here's completely dry. And then here's the reverb. So secondly, pad sounds. As worship keys players, this is our homeland. Pad sounds create a lush texture that sit underneath the band when they're playing and provide a background sound for the band when they stop. As we've talked about, 
We want to lead people into God's presence. And sometimes when the band stops playing and it's just silent, that can be really unsettling and distracting for the congregation. So we use pad sounds to fill that silence and catch people as the band comes down. There are many different variations on pad sounds, but here is an, is an example of what pad sounds might sound like. At both of our sites, there are faders that control the pad volume. Now, reverb and cutoff also play a massive part in pad sounds. Let me s start with what our pad sounds like with no cutoff and with no reverb. They might sound something like this. Pretty brutal and in your face, right? Well, let's bring the cutoff down. Let's add some reverb. And now you've got a really ambient warm sound. So we'll start off here. Take the cutoff down. and add some reverb. The cutoff can be really helpful to build a song. For example, here's an excerpt from one of our home written songs and watch how I use the cutoff to build as the song builds. So I'd love to encourage you to find a nice big pad sound and then use that cut off to tame it down. And then use it again to build as the song builds. Another type of sound that you'll often hear is termed shimmer. This actually comes from guitar players initially in the 80s, but it's become a go-to sound in the worship world. So let's have a listen to it by itself. You won't often hear it by itself, but if you pair it with another sound, it suddenly brings it to life. Here's some piano, some pad, and some shimmer. And without the shimmer, and with again, This sound is helpful because it brings a sparkle and shimmer, hence the name, to your mix. Nobody else in the band is generating frequencies this high, and so it fills a gap in the sonic space and adds height to the mix. So that's shimmer. Be sure to use it sparingly and when appropriate though, it would be too much to use it all of the time. There are literally millions of other keyboard sounds, it's probably unlimited, and it would take me forever to go through them. You can find some videos online and check other sounds out for yourself. But I'd like to mention just one more sound, and that's the Hammond organ. This is much less used in our context than the other sounds I've just spoken about, but it does still get a play occasionally. This sound goes back to gospel, jazz, and blues music, and really fattens up a mix and gives it that rocky, bluesy gospel character. This is what it sounds like, something like this. I'd say that you want to be careful about using this sound too much, especially if there's not other keys players playing piano and pads. It can really be too much for a lot of mixes, but sometimes it can be a really effective tool when used at the right time. 
So lastly, I'd like to just mention uh, layering. It is rare that as a keys player in worship, you'll just play a piano or just play a pad. Instead, the skill comes in mixing the sounds together to layer a sound that complements the band. This can be done by moving the volume faders around and balancing out the volumes. Chat with your sound guy and worship leader and your MD or musical director and work out a nice blend that works for everyone. Practice morphing this sound to the, to the song and to the band setup. So I'd encourage you to check out your keyboard rigs for these sounds and rigs that you often play on and really familiarize yourself with how they all work. It takes practice, but the results can be so rewarding. Thanks for joining me in this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one where we'll talk about knowing what to play and when.